on using GitOps to increase system resiliency with litmus chaos. This is Serna and I work at Harness as Senior Software Engineer and I am one of the core uh, team member at Litmus Kiosk which is now a CNC incubating project and uh, I've been uh, contributing to it for the past uh, for around for two years and it has been a great journey so far and now Amit will be introducing himself. Hey everyone, I'm Amit Kumar Das. I'm a Senior Software Engineer at Harness and I'm a core contributor to Litmus Kiosk and I've been contributing to the project from past two years and yeah uh, very excited to be a part uh, of kcd chennai yeah that's uh, pretty much about me uh, looking forward to it thank you yeah thank you amit so today's agenda will be will be first of all we'll be talking about chaos engineering why is it required and then we'll be introducing litmus chaos talk about its core components and features then amit will be taking us through the GitOps and giving us a small demo of uh, how you can use GitOps to uh, uh, like leverage like use uh, like increase the system resiliency uh, using litmus so yeah without further ado let's get started uh, to start off with uh, first of all we need to know what is resilience so resilience is basically the system's ability to sustain a fault uh, uh, and bring itself back up so for example let's say a pod gets evicted from the node what is its state is it healthy or not does it bring itself back up if it does and it is uh, resilient and that period from going down to bringing itself back up is uh, the resilience so similar is the case with node and memory leak as well uh, talking about downtimes, uh, downtimes are expensive not just in terms of money but also there uh, in other aspects as well such as uh, customer confidence, there's a loss of customer confidence, then uh, damage to brand integrity, then uh, loss of uh, productivity and uh, employee morale as well. So considering all these etc like these are some of the uh, aspects and considering all these uh, all these aspects uh, we definitely want to uh, avoid downtimes at any cost and one way to do this is by adopting the uh, practice of chaos engineering and chaos engineering is the like a process of testing a distributed computing system uh, by injecting fault intentionally so the goal here is to uh, identify the weaknesses in your applic in the application through controlled experiments uh, so that uh, to check uh, whether it can ident uh, whether it can withstand the unexpected uh, situations or not and so how it is done it is typically done by like first of all you have to identify the steady state conditions so um, steady state conditions are the desired behavior of the application in a given scenario when it is healthy so first of all you identify that then you introduce a fault in application then you check if the steady state conditions are met or not if yes then the application is resilient and if not uh, you can go and fix it and if some similar case happens in production you are already covered then uh, talking about the foundations of chaos, uh, cloud native chaos engineering and how like uh, how it can be practiced effectively. So uh, the cloud native definition itself uh, includes some mandatory principles uh, such as uh, it requires declarative configs being scalable, uh, flexible and support of uh, cross cloud. So um, these are some of the major principles which we have been following for the past few years. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, cloud native communities and technologies uh, revolve around open source and these chaos engineering framework being uh, open source gives them the benefit to make themselves better and add more and more features and the chaos experiments need to be a uh, very uh, simple to use uh, highly flexible and highly tunable with very less or little little or no chance of false positives or false negatives then uh, with more and more people uh, getting involved into chaos uh, chaos engineering uh, more and more changes happen very frequently that with the requirements be, uh, being altered so there as a, arises a need of um, uh, like it becomes very important for the chaos engineering framework to enable proper management of the chaos experiment and that too in kubernetes way then as you um, 
start practicing cures and doing more and more, start fixing the uh, little issues that come in more and more cures scenarios come into picture and gradually it becomes very large and comprehensive so these uh, cures scenarios need to be automated and triggered uh, if changes are made either in the um, application or in the cures experiments and tools uh, around um, gitops can uh, are one way to um, achieve it then uh, so this is like uh, this is a section we'll be talking about in detail and giving us uh, giving you all the demo and uh, then lastly there's open observability which is also one of the principles uh, introduction to chaos engineering should uh, should not require any new uh, observability system the existing ones should fit in perfectly so yeah that's that then with that i would like to introduce litmus chaos which is an open source uh, cloud native uh, chaos engineering framework with it has also it also has the uh, cross cloud support and uh, currently it is uh, cncf incubating and um, it has adoption across several organizations then uh, uh, talking about the features that chaos center provides starting off with the chaos workflows uh, chaos workflows is the collection of several several uh, chaos experiments which can be clubbed in either a sequentially or parallelly like in any manner and uh, it can be created these workflows can be created using uh, custom templates that you can like you can uh, upload or you can um, use uh, create your own class custom workflows from chaos hub which is the like a repository kind of like it is the place where all the chaos experiments are present you can choose from there or you can use some pre-created pre-created yamls are also there you can choose uh, from them as well then uh, you can schedule your workflows either as a recurring one the cron workflows or you can have a singular workflow as well then um, lastly you can attach priority for to each of the experiments in your in the particular workflow if according to your own requirements uh, workflow management, uh, GitOps, uh, this is a section we're talking about a bit later. Then um, you can, uh, Litmus allows you to add your own image from your own um, image server, custom image server, which can be either public or private. Or uh, then uh, once the Kios injection is done, uh, you can measure and analyze the resilience score of each workflow. Uh, you can uh, analyze how your application performed in that particular uh, Kios workflow. So yeah, that's that. Then uh, Litmus also uh, supports multi-tenancy, which means you can create your own team, uh, add other, invite other users to your team, and uh, like as viewer or editor permissions. Like it has a fine-grained uh, role-based access controls, which gives the necessary privileges to the users. Then scope support is also there. I have talked about it. You can install it in namespace or cluster-wide scope, and authentication is there. You can choose to have local uh, authentication or you can or the OAuth one so yeah that's that then um, coming to monitoring and observability so you can connect your own data source and monitor the workflows or you can visualize there are graphs present where you can visualize the workflow run statistics or the uh, schedule statistics you can also uh, once the workflows are running uh, or computed execution uh, you can compare two or more workflows how they performed and um, in case you do not like the interleave dashboard that is present you can upload your own um, dashboards from the available that are available in the community you can edit them you can tune your own dash tune the dashboards according to your own requirements and lastly you can uh, monitor the chaos in real time with the interleaved events and metrics uh, uh, from the Prometheus data source. Then uh, with Litmus Chaos, you can not only um, uh, target Kubernetes application, but you can also target uh, uh, Chaos like on infra resources or attack biometals or machine as well. Lastly, GitOps for Chaos. Uh, so uh, it basically integrates uh, let us, uh, you, uh, it integrates any git based source control manager to provide a single source of truth uh, provided that um, you have enabled GitOps. Once the GitOps is enabled, it kind of switches off uh, MongoDB as the um, as the DB uh, like the data source. Um, then uh, Git will uh, like act as a single source of truth. So. Uh, and this is also bi-directional in nature so that means if any change occur to either all the uh, like 
all the workflows are being uh, stored in git uh, in the git source so uh, if any change happened it to either uh, chaos center or in the git source both of them will automatically in sync then uh, it also provides event tracker service as a microservice where you can launch the subscribed workflows it like it launches the subscribed workflows automatically if there's any change in the application such as upgrades or and all so it automatically launches the uh, chaos workflows yeah uh, so that's that now i'll be like uh, now amit will be talking about uh, gitops in more uh, detail and will be giving us uh, a demo so yeah over to you amit thank you thanks aranya so before moving on to the demo i'll be talking about uh, gitops and why do we need chaos engineering with gitops so gitops is basically an operational framework which uses uh, git as a single source of truth and any change in the code or in the git repository uh, needs to be fully synced with the cloud infrastructure of the organization it follows the principle of infrastructure as a code where managing and provisioning uh, of the infrastructure is through the code rather than manual processes now moving on to the main question uh, why do we need chaos engineering with gitops so the uh, chaos engineering with gitops will enable a vast scope of automation uh, with ci cd pipelines so currently chaos engineering is being uh, performed in a closed environment or in a pre production stage but what we, what if we enable uh, chaos engineering in the ci cd stage so this will actually uh, uh, enable the developers uh, with the known faults before it goes to the pre production stage and some advantages of gitops are increase uh, uh, increase in productivity so developers are more focused on the development rather than the ci cd of the infrastructure and it reduces the mean time to deployment and uh, the second point is high reliability so gitops practice are considered one of the best practices uh, uh, because it reduces the mean time to recovery like if we have any fault we can simply roll back uh, to a previous stable version so the third point is better security so git is a very secure uh, uh, platform or a framework because uh, it's very strong with its cryptography and the ability to sign your changes uh, provides the uh, uh, ownership uh, to the change or to the source code and uh, it improves the auditing so uh, since um, uh, gitops uses git so the, uh, we can keep the track we can keep a track on the audit logs and uh, we can uh, know any change which is uh, going into the git repository with the uh, logs so it uh, uh, increases the auditing as well so now moving on to the demo uh, i have set up uh, the litmus chaos center let me yeah so for this demo i have installed the chaos center on gk and along with it uh, i'll be using two cloud native applications which are the bank of anthos anthos application and an online beauty application and uh, so this bank of anthos application is actually a banking application and we can perform a lot of operations like sending a payment or depositing a payment uh, and similarly this online boutique application is actually an e-commerce application since you can see a lot of products uh, listed here and we have a catalog we have a, a functionality to change uh, uh, the pricing according to different currencies and we have a cart option here so we'll be performing some chaos uh, engineering on these two uh, microservices and uh, uh, for this uh, i'll be using chaos center and to enable the gitops functionality of uh, chaos center uh, this is very simple to do uh, we have in the settings tab we have a, a tab named as gitops uh, simply select this git uh, repository option and i'll be providing a git repository so moving here yeah so this is a uh, empty repository which i have created uh, for this demo and to connect this git repository i'll uh, use the repository link uh, the branch where i'll be pushing all my changes which is the main branch and we can uh, provide two authentication methods which are the access token and ssh so i have my access token with me so i'll be using it yeah don't worry i'll uh, delete my access token later <laughs> Uh, so i'll just uh, click connect and uh, it will take uh, a few seconds yeah so we have successfully enabled the gitops uh, uh, for our project and to verify the same we can go to the git repository again and if i refresh this i should see a litmus directory being created and the directory structure shows me the project id here so uh, if i see that this uh, 205ed is actually my project id which is 205ed we can also verify it from here uh, the project id is given here 
So we have successfully configured GitOps within our application. And uh, now we'll start uh, to do some chaos engineering. Uh, and let's get started with the bank of Anthos application. So I have uh, deployed this uh, application along with all its services uh, in the namespace called bank. And here we can see a lot of services like balance reader, contacts, uh, load generator, transition history are available. And so currently what I'll try to do is I'll try to delete this pod, the transition history pod, uh, which actually shows me all the uh, transition uh, transaction history uh, within this uh, application. So let, let's get started with it. So I'll try to uh, schedule a workflow. Uh, I'll create, uh, I'll click on the self agent. And here we have four options uh, to uh, create a chaos workflow. So we have the option to run a predefined workflow or we can clone a existing chaos workflow or we can use the git, uh, uh, we can use the chaos hub, which is a, a marketplace of all the chaos experiments. And we can also import a workflow manifest YAML. So for now, I'll just use the uh, chaos hub. I'll click next and I'll provide a name here. Uh, delete. Uh, transaction pod. So I'll click next and uh, I will add the pod delete experiment pod delete. Yeah, here it is. And to target the pod, I have to select the namespace, uh, which is the uh, bank namespace. And we have the transaction history label here. So I'll select this one. And uh, for the timing, I'll not add any probes. I'll just continue to tune the experiment. Here I'll, I can provide uh, different uh, uh, environment variables to my experiment. So for, for now, for this experiment, I'll select the total chaos duration as 60 and the chaos interval to be as 30 seconds. Yeah. Now I'll finish up all my changes and I'll turn off this reward schedule uh, since I want to know the logs and the other details of my uh, workflow. So I'll click next and I can select the weights here uh, of the experiment. I'll uh, uh, select the schedule now option and I'll, uh, I I'll verify all my changes. It's the delete transaction pod and I'll check if the labels are uh, correct over here. Uh, so which is uh, the bank namespace and the label is transaction history and I'll just finish my changes here. Yeah, so we can see that the workflow has started and if I click here, I'll get a uh, Argo graph uh, which shows the live uh, uh, changes which are taking place in the workflow. And uh, interestingly, if I go to my Git repository and do a refresh, I'll see that uh, this uh, workflow manifest is also here. So any change which is happening uh, in this workflow will also be reflected uh, in my Git repository as well. So uh, we, we, let's uh, wait for a few minutes, a uh, few seconds or few minutes uh, for the workflow to get completed. And meanwhile, we can observe uh, the chaos which, is uh, which will be happening uh, in this uh, bank of anthos application so we can see that the pod delete experiment pause had just uh, started up and if we uh, go to the litmus namespace i can confirm that the pod delete runner has just started and the transaction uh, uh, pod is actually uh, terminating so if i refresh this page i'll i should see that this service is uh, uh, under chaos and we don't have any data related to the transaction history and once the uh, once the transaction history pod is back uh, into its running state, uh, we should uh, see the uh, details uh, over here. So let me refresh this uh, page again. It's still under chaos. And once the workflow is finished and uh, this service is in running state, we, we should uh, get the details. Uh, so let's wait for a while. Yeah, so since we can see that uh, the workflow has completed and the pod delete experiment has also uh, run successfully. So uh, we'll go back to the Bank of Anthos application and we'll just refresh. And we can see that uh, the transaction uh, history is now avail available. So uh, uh, to cross verify this, we can also see that the transaction history pod is now back and running. So we have induced uh, a chaos uh, uh, on this service, the transaction history service. Uh, on Bank of Anthos application. So what if I need, uh, uh, like uh, currently in this uh, manifest, we can see that uh, the chaos duration was 60 and the chaos interval was of 30 seconds. But if I need to change uh, these uh, environment variables, 
so uh, instead of uh, creating a new workflow completely i what i can do is i can go to my git repository and i can simply update these changes in my uh, workflow manifest so let me go here and try to change the variables or the environment variables here i will change it to 100 and change the chaos interval to 50 seconds yeah. and now i'll commit these changes yeah so uh, in our git repository we have made uh, the required changes and it will take a few minutes to get synced with this uh, uh, with the chaos center so let's let's wait for a few minutes over here so uh, if i uh, refresh the page and uh, load the manifest again i can see that uh, previously it was uh, uh, 50 seconds or 60 seconds but since i've changed the environment variables the values uh, can be uh, seen here so these are the updated values which i provided uh, in my git repository so the total chaos duration was 100 and the chaos interval was 50 and these changes uh, are now available in my uh, chaos center and uh, to run this workflow i'll just have to do a, a quick rerun of the workflow and the same workflow will uh, get started with the updated values and we can cross verify it from our manifest and we see we can see that uh, the chaos duration value is 100 and the chaos interval value is 50. so all the changes uh, from my git as well as from my uh, chaos center are uh, synced together and uh, yeah so this is basically it and apart from that if you want to uh, add some changes via uh, some other methods like uh, from a pull request so we can also do that and for that i let me go ahead and create a new branch uh, let me create a new branch named as test branch yeah and in this test branch i'll uh, add a file uh, i'll probably add a new kiosk workflow i have created one Jenny and yeah. so i have this workflow which is the delete catalog uh, workflow and it will actually target the uh, online boutique shop and here we can see the namespace is shop and the app label is uh, product catalog service so instead of configuring it from the kiosk center itself what i'll do i'll just uh, add a new file over here i'll upload a file and i'll drag and drop this file over here and i'll provide a workflow uh, name to this uh, so this is the workflow name uh, and one thing we need to keep in mind is uh, the workflow name should be the same as the file name so the workflow name uh, needs to be same as the file name over here so now i'll just commit the changes and from this uh, branch i'll uh, make a pull request to the main branch where all our changes are being synced so let me uh, compare and uh, let me just cross check if uh, the manifest is uploaded yeah so it has been uploaded the delete catalog service and i'll raise a pr uh, to the main branch yeah so add files via upload or pr and i'll create a pull request and the pull request has been successfully created and once I merge these changes into uh, my uh, main branch, we can see that a schedule getting created over here as well as the workflow getting uh, started since it's a one-time workflow. So let me merge this uh, pull request. Yeah, so the pull request is successfully merged and uh, in my Git repository in the main branch, I can see that this catalog service uh, from PR has been added and uh, let's wait for a few minutes to see uh, to get the ch uh, changes from the git uh, to get synced with uh, the chaos center yeah so now we can see that uh, since the pr got merged and the changes are now in main branch uh, so uh, it has triggered uh, the uh, git operations and we can see that a service uh, a schedule named delete chaos uh, delete catalog service from pr which is same as the file name over here has been created uh, and similarly the workflow run has also uh, started so let me click here and see all the uh, related information so we can see that it's currently installing the chaos experiments and uh, in a few minutes we can see that uh, the uh, catalog service uh, getting down and let me just show the, all the services over here uh, yeah so this is the shop namespace where, where i have all the services running like the card service the currency service, the front-end email service, 
payment service and the catalog service so uh, with the current experiment we'll be uh, terminating this uh, catalog experiment and we can see that the status is in terminating state and if i refresh this i will see that uh, yeah there something has failed below are some uh, de details for debugging and the service is down so uh, even if i refresh this i think it should uh, be down but i guess uh, it's back into its original state since uh, the chaos injection time was pretty low in this case uh, yeah and uh, yeah so we can see that uh, we have injected chaos uh, from the git repository and it's now it was uh, visible uh, in the application as well from the git repository so uh, these were a few uh, operations which can be performed from chaos center so uh, the major scope uh, here uh, for gitops with litmus chaos is to uh, add these uh, gitops functionality in your ci cd pipelines or you can use these uh, uh, in your github actions uh, uh, to run chaos uh, uh, within your ci cd uh, uh, ci cd stage so uh, i think uh, that's it uh, from the uh, demo and uh, yeah that's uh, pretty much from uh, my side as well thank you